Here we go again. Power plug upgraded. I need that. I need this. I need 10 of these to make it work the way I want it to. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now to modify that. Okay. So here we are on 180 meters. And over here, the 1,000 watt slug, 1,000 in average, and a 5 watt slug in reverse. Okay. I gotta get all this in frame. So we're going to put about 80, 85 watts into this thing. And it's doing about 7, 750 watts peak power on sideband. Okay. We're going to go here. We're going to go to 80. All right. That's 700 watts with about 100 watts worth of drive. Go on up. Let's see, 4.4 megahertz through 8. Well, there we are. 100 watts of drive. Hello. 700 watts. Now, I am pushing this a little hard. As I had a guy point out to me the other day, actually yesterday, he says that, well, even when you were working on my so-and-so box, you overdrove it a little bit. Yeah. Why do we do that? Get the max out of it. If you're just sitting there putting along doing 75 watts, this thing would do about 500 coming out. Okay. So, Let's go on up here to 20. Right in the middle of the 20 meter band. Back on down here. 500 watts. All right, let's come on up here, I think 12 meters. Now let's do 15. There we go. 21.3. At 80 watts of drive going in. At 500 coming out. This thing works. The ferrite is needed because there's no other blocking other than the, this disc capacitor. These two disc capacitors right here. There's no other RF isolation between the 12 volt circuit that comes in, goes through the meter shunt, and goes directly down to the amplification board. This is a bad oversight on MFJ, I mean, Ameritron's part. Bad. Okay, now this amp comes with this remote. This remote does not have any network cables with it. So, let me go borrow some network cables. Ooh, sorry. We go borrow some network cables and we'll hook this thing up and we'll show it operating again via the remote. So to make this work, we'll flip this thing down to aux. God, that's sweet of you, MFJ. Flip that thing down to remote. Now it's on remote, this thing lights up. 160. Do it again. Step on the pedal. I do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. 80. Hello, one, two, one, two. 20. Hello, one, two, one, two.
20 meters. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Then 15. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. So everything works as it should. Everything. Now, I cannot send the network cables with this thing, but to me, I don't feel that that's that big of a deal. I just, just don't. I feel network cables are a dime a dozen these days. And I think that making your own coax connectors and being able to cut down your own Cat5 is just part of being in the game. That's just me, it's my opinion. But opinions are like buttholes, everybody's got one, so. There is that too. We use stranded wire here, Teflon. This goes to your ignition switch. So if you do have it set up for the remote, this is on. And let's say you have this set up for, I don't know, 160 meters. I don't know why you would do that in a mobile. It's kind of rare, but it does happen. And you pull off that ignition source, shuts the amp down. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, the same thing goes on here. You can have this on, have this down here in the remote setting. And let's say you've got this set up for 20 meters and you turn your, your truck or your car off, click. As soon as you turn this off, click, the whole unit shuts down. Okay, so now we know what every wire does. We proved that it works on every band. Uh, the faceplate on this one is like brand new. Little tiny burble up here in a corner, but I'm not going to get excited about that. The tin for this one is in great shape. There's uh, three little scuff marks over here on the corner, just in all transparency. Other than that, this thing is in titties condition. With the remote. And the OG owner's manual. That came with it. Uh, this has got four Toshiba transistors, legit, real deal Toshibas. Not the aftermarket Chinese pills that they're putting in them today. Um, 15 plus the ride. And you guys know the drill. First one to call me or text me or hoop and holler at me gets it. Got upgraded power wire, upgraded Anderson clip because this is what you actually should use. Remember, it's like I explained in the previous video why I do this. I think the power wire that comes from MFJ is too small. I think that it gives people the false illusion that this thing doesn't require a great deal of power. It does, it's a 110 amp draw on an average. So, I mean, this is an average reading meter, right? We hook up a peak meter and we're going to see much more. But on average, you want about 100 amps worth of supply. Well, in your average vehicle, that's 10 or 15 feet of wire. Go from the battery up front back to where you're going to have this thing mounted. That's why I say run a piece of 4 gauge, get yourself an Anderson clip, 4 gauge. Because DC does not like to go very far without losing a bunch of current. So that's why I do the dual 8s and the positive and the negative, and we hook it up to a 150 amp Anderson clip. In the previous video in this series, I've done two of these back to back, just in case you're watching them separately at different times. I go and I cut the power wires that come from MFJ off and we replace them because it had like six butt splices plus eight fuses all in that power wire. You don't use butt splices. You put two wires together, you're going to put them together, solder them, and heat shrink them. Right? Butt splices, no good. Unless we're talking big manly splices, and you've got a hydraulic crimper, not... Oh, I got out my wire strippers and my butt splices that I bought at Home Depot. No. No, no, no. No. You're asking for a fire. This allows you more flexibility. This is a very common plug. That is not a very common plug. It's like 10 bucks. Okay. You want to modify this so this works on 10 or 11 meters, 10 meters. There's a board, it's $59. 
you buy it from Ameritron or MFJ Enterprises. You want to do this screw, this screw, this screw. Take the board, set it down on here. You put that screw back in, that screw back in, that screw back in, and it'll work for 10 or 11. This is strictly an amateur amplifier. It's designed to be used in the HF bands, period. And I'm not interested in expanding these or expanding this. This is something that any home gamer can do. It doesn't require any cutting, needle nosing, slipping, farting, soldering iron, crushing of any resistors, none of that. The same tool that you use to open the box is the same tool you're going to use to modify this. Okay. Gentlemen. Call text. All right. I'm going to run. Thank you guys. Appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you. Click, click.